Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Today we are going to talk about syllogisms. So the first of the formal systems that we are going to cover in this series of videos dates back to Aristotle, who lived in the 4th century BCE. In the prior analytics, he developed a system of syllogistic reasoning which provided the foundation for the development of the study of, the, of logic in the Western philosophical tradition. Now, many of you may be familiar with the argument that I'm about to give you. It's probably one of the best known, most famous arguments in Western philosophy. Every human is mortal. Socrates is human, therefore Socrates is mortal. Now, given what we said about goodness of arguments being related to their necessary truth preservation in the previous video, you can see that it, intuitively on the surface of it, this is a good argument. If every human is mortal, Socrates is in fact human, then he can't go around being immortal because that would violate the conditions of truth preservation. Now, this argument is actually often called a syllogism, but we shall see in a later video that this precise one probably isn't best called a syllogism. Instead, let's consider a kind of a very similar sort of argument that all cats are mammals, all mammals are animals, therefore all cats are animals. Now this one, if you had any worries about the previous argument, this one certainly should assuage any of your worries. This is a good argument, and indeed, we are going to develop a formal system that shows exactly why that argument is a good argument. Now, when I say we are going to be doing syllogisms, and that syllogisms date back to Aristotle, I want to make it clear that what we will actually be doing is not Aristotle's syllogistics as it is found in the prior analytics, following his method, following everything, but what we are going to be talking about is a slightly more general variation, which we will call the Aristotelian syllogistics. So don't take this as Aristotle exegesis or a study of the prior analytics. If you've come here for that, you've come to the wrong place. Instead, we are going to kind of take the system as presented in Aristotle and give it kind of a modern logical makeover. The important thing at this point to understand about the syllogism is the building blocks that go into the types of arguments that we'll be able to express in this logic. It is a term logic as opposed to a propositional logic or a predicate logic. Those are two types of logics that we will be looking at in later videos, and I will talk about how they differ and kind of what the different emphases are, why you would pick one type of logic over another. But anyway, syllogisms are done in a term logic where the basic building blocks are going to be individual terms and things that link them together. These things that link them together are called copulae, rather than propositions or statements or predicates or variables or any of these things. So terms are things like animal, cat, mammal, human, mortal, but also slightly more complex verbal phrases such as is running, is dancing, is sleeping, is studying logic. These are the sorts of terms that we are going to be using to feed into our language, which we can then construct arguments out of. Now, why are we starting with the syllogism? People often decry the syllogism as being very constrained. There's a lot of things that you would like to be able to say. There are a lot of arguments you would like to be able to make that will not fit into this system that we are giving. And in fact, we will spend quite a bit of time explaining what the limitations of the syllogism are. So why am I even presenting it in the first place? The answer is precisely because of the constraints that it has on what you are able to say. The syllogistic is, at root, a finite, bounded system. If we wanted to, I could give you, individually, one by one, every single good argument that you can make in a syllogism and every single bad argument that you can make in the syllogism. Essentially, the syllogism is, you can think of it as like a little toy exercise that allows us to not only learn the details of a particular logic, but also learn how all of the things I've been talking about in the previous videos fit together. Things like language, semantics, proof theory, soundness, completeness, 
all of these rather abstract topics that I've introduced, we can, I can make them, <laughs> I can put them into the flesh for you so that we can see exactly what these notions all are in a particular concrete instance. So this is why we start with the syllogism. It gives us the opportunity to do everything that we would like to do with the logic in terms of introducing the theoretical notions, but it is constrained enough that if necessary, we could do everything that we needed to in a brute force. In a sense, the syllogism does not require any ingenuity. So any of you who have been sitting here thinking, logic, this sounds kind of scary, this isn't me, I'm an emotional thinker, well, the syllogism is an excellent place for you to cut your teeth. Next video, we will actually get into the details, but here's just a brief introduction to what we will be talking about and why I want to pick this, excuse me, as the place to get started. So join me next time to get the details of the syllogism. See you then. Cheers.